I was probably underperforming in class because of my desire to stay in great physical shape. There were many occasions in college and even in law school where I did not study for a test or even a final exam as hard as I should have, just to make sure I worked out at least 90 minutes a day, alternating weightlifting and related strength training with aerobic exercise. Exercises. Luckily, I had enough natural intelligence to survive, even though I was in the bottom 40% of my class in law school. Despite my fitness and the fact that exercise is supposed to release pleasure chemicals in the brain, I was not as happy as I should have been. The reason seemed to haunt me. By the time I graduated from law school at 25, I had had a few decent romantic sexual relationships, but unfortunately, the women I was attracted to seemed to be rather superficial. Maybe it's because I'm also shallow and have prioritized physical fitness over romance in my life priorities. It seemed that women were more attracted to my body than to me. I can't complain, though, because I felt the same attraction to them because of their physicality. One intelligent woman I dated scared me to death. I didn't know what to do with her. Anyway, I got a job in a major Midwestern city in the United States with the private law firm of Austin McKenzie despite my lackluster academic credentials. Perhaps I was chosen as a paralegal because I interviewed brilliantly, or because they were looking for diversity and needed a physically strong man, since the rest of my group of assistants were, well, not physically strong. On the Saturday after my first week at work, I was at the local park running on an aerobic day shortly after it rained. The woman running in front of me apparently slipped on a wet spot and fell. I ran up to her, helped her to her feet and examined her knees. She seemed a little older than me, maybe five or six years, and was definitely sexy, but I tried to be a gentleman and worry about her knees rather than how sexy she was. I'm Brian Sheckley, I said, shaking her hand as she rose to her feet. Brenda Johnson, she answered with a grimace of pain. I think you need to wash your knees and put some ointment on them. Do you have a first aid kit in your car? I asked. I live nearby, so I don't drive a car. I have a first aid kit in my car. Let me help, I answered. Concern was visible on her face. Look, if you're worried that I'm an axe-wielding maniac, call one of your friends and send him or her a photo of me so that if I kill you, I'll be caught and punished. I said with a smile. Although I was, I wonder if my attempt at humor will put her off. Luckily, Brenda laughed. She took her phone out of her bag, took a photo of me, and apparently sent the photo along with a text message to her friend. I didn't ask to read the text. Having finished, she said, Okay, I'll take you up on your offer. We were only a quarter of a mile from my car, and despite the obvious discomfort, she was able to walk to it just fine. While walking, I noticed an engagement and wedding ring on the fourth finger of her left hand. Since I have an ironclad rule of not hitting on married women, regardless of her sexuality, no romantic relationships followed. On the way to my car, we just chatted about our training regimen and the weather. When we got to the car, I asked her to sit on the hood while I cleaned up her knees and applied ointment to them, and even put a small bandage on one of the cuts. I tried to focus on work and not on how sexy her legs were. After finishing, I asked her, Can I give you a ride home? I don't want to interfere with your training, she replied. You won't interfere. I'll be back here to finish whether I give you a ride or not. I do not hurry. Thank you. The pain is a little more than I like. Can you give me a ride? It's about three quarters of a mile. As we drove, we just chatted about the area. I dropped her off at the townhouse and she thanked me. I made a U-turn to head back to the park but couldn't help but notice her butt as she walked away. Nice ass. Too bad she's married, I said to myself. And then I just drove back to the park, finished my workout and didn't think about it anymore. I was surprisingly good at my job, despite not working as many hours as other junior lawyers and having a less impressive resume from law school. One of the reasons was the specific job I was doing. I seemed to have a talent for preparing license applications for the Small Business Administration and applications for other parts of the federal government, and unlike some other attorneys, I found it interesting rather than boring. Another reason was that, despite searching, I did not find a suitable female company. 
I mostly interact with women at the fitness club I joined, and unfortunately, all the women I was attracted to were already married. I made friends, but there was no talk of any romance. There was one problem at work. One of the senior assistants named Jeremiah Johnson was a notorious asshole. He tried to keep me from working on licensing applications for multiple partners by assigning small tasks to help him for which I received no gratitude. After about two weeks of this crap, I spoke out against it. I must say that I am not one for confrontation. In fact, it's quite the opposite, and this is one of my shortcomings. Sorry, JJ, I said when he tried to give me another routine task, and I discovered that he hated being called JJ. I have enough to do with several partner licenses and no time for your tedious tasks. You should work harder, Sheckley. Your billable hours are not commensurate with your assistant grade, he chuckled. It's not for you to judge this. The partners I work with are happy with my work, and it's only because I have a lighter schedule that I can quickly respond to what they want to do, I answered calmly. JJ continued his tirade for a few more minutes before I had enough. I stood up, looked him straight in the face, and growled, I don't obey your orders, idiot. Do not mind it. If you want, complain to management, but I'm not your errand boy. He blushed deeply and ran out, swearing several times. Knowing that he would go to management, I forestalled his attack by contacting the three partners for whom I was preparing license applications, lying slightly about the fact that I was able to do them on time solely because I was not overwhelmed with the crap that he wanted to inundate me with. JJ and got their support. One of the partners, John McKenzie, is the son of one of the two founders of Austin McKenzie and a real stand-up guy. He went to management and demanded that JJ stop trying to delegate crap to me. I didn't suffer any negative consequences from my little run-in with JJ, except that I stopped liking him and some of his senior lawyer buddies. I didn't care. If people like JJ ever became managers, I would have left the company a long time ago. The first company-wide event since I started working was a Saturday barbecue, although it was most likely a team performance. And even if it weren't, I would want to go because there are a lot of people in the firm that I only know indirectly, but want to get to know better. Imagine my surprise when one of the first people I saw there was Brenda Johnson. She came up to me with a smile and said, I was sure you worked in the medical field, given how skillfully you treated my little bobos. She grinned. Hello? Brenda, isn't it? I answered with my smile. Even though I remembered exactly who she was, I decided it was best to pretend to be unsure. Do you work for Austin McKenzie? No, I sell real estate. My husband, Jeremiah, works as a lawyer here, she replied. I had never thought about the fact that their last name was Johnson since it is the second most common surname in the United States, with 655 per 100,000 people having this surname. This made me laugh. What's so funny? She asked more friendly than sarcastically. I'm your husband's least favorite person in Austin McKenzie. I grinned. Well then, let's not talk about him. She grinned in response. Fine. Then let me ask you this. What are your hobbies in life? besides selling real estate and jogging in parks. And what are your deepest and darkest fears? I asked with a grin. Wow, you... Well, you're so impudent, she laughed. We continued to have very pleasant, light conversation for the next 15 minutes or so. Thankfully, she never answered my question about her darkest fears. Then Joan, one of her friends and the wife of one of her partners, came up to us and said that she needed two more people on the volleyball team to challenge the group that had taken over the outdoor court. Brenda and I agreed, so we joined Joan. Over the course of the next few friendly but competitive volleyball sets, I learned a few things. Brenda is a great athlete. Joan tries hard, but isn't as athletic. Most of the people in the company who participated in the game are friendly. JJ is an even bigger asshole than I thought. One thing I already knew that has been confirmed is that Brenda is hot, all caps. We had two very friendly sets against two other teams, which we won before JJ was on the other side in the third set. Apparently, he noticed Brenda and I constantly laughing on the court, and it annoyed him. 
One of the rules was a ban on hard blows. Of course, J.J. immediately broke it. He mostly tried to hit me with the ball, but I was a much stronger athlete and blocked his first four attempts. On the fifth attempt, he hit Joan in the head. I took care of Joan while Brenda gave J.J. a beating. Despite the bruise, Joan really wanted to continue playing, so we continued. However, on match point, my basic instincts kicked in. I hit the ball as hard as I could, hitting J.J. in the face so hard I knocked him down. Sorry, J.J., I said with mock concern as I walked to the other side of the net and extended my hand to help him up. Fuck you, was his answer. The situation would have been awkward, but then the bell rang and everyone was invited to eat. Brenda wasn't too happy with J.J. and went to the food line with me. I muttered to her, Sorry. With a devilish grin, she muttered in response, Why, he deserved it, and then smiled. J.J. ran up, grabbed Brenda's hand and said, Let's take a table. Brenda looked at me, sighed, and went with him. I heard him tell her, Don't mess with this asshole. I didn't hear her answer, but it didn't look conciliatory. I ate at the same table with Joan, her husband, John McKenzie and his wife, and three secretaries. It was very pleasant, a lot of humor, and no talk about work. After our food was slightly overcooked, the HR manager in charge of events, including the purchase of a bouncy house for the company's children, organized a fun old-fashioned competition. Middle-aged children had egg-in-a-spoon races on spoons and eggs, and all ages had sack and three-legged races. I was just an enthusiastic spectator until the piggyback racing began. I was surprised to see J.J. paired with Alice, a female lawyer I only knew tangentially. They pulled me by the hand. Be my horse and let's defeat my husband and this slut, Brenda said, smiling at me. Why did he team up with Alice? I asked. Because he's angry that I contacted you earlier. Now let's pull his chain, Brenda said with a grin. So funny, I grinned. Brenda insisted that we line up next to J.J. and Alice in the six-person team competition. As I was the fittest in the firm, we won easily, crossing the finish line ten meters ahead of J.J. and Alice. J.J. was not too happy, as Brenda and I each received a cool gift for our victory. As I was leaving after a fun day, I thought J.J. and Brenda were arguing as they walked to their car. I felt bad for Brenda, but I hoped she would give J.J. hell. Things went pretty well for the next few months. I saw Brenda two more times in the park where we first met. One day we went jogging together, although for me it wasn't much of an exercise, other than a treat for the eyes, and after that we had lunch at a nearby grocery store. We never mentioned J.J. Brenda seemed to like me, even though neither of us was flirting. I still had problems romantically, although I did have a couple of decent but certainly not earth-shattering one-night stands. It was early Sunday morning, shortly after I had taken a shower after a strength workout, when I got a call on my cell phone. The number has not been identified. I usually don't answer calls like this, but for some reason, I answered this one. Brian Sheckley. Hello, Brian. This is Brenda. Do you have some free time today? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. I was a little taken aback, but, of course, I wasn't going to say no, so I answered, Um, of course. Do you want to meet somewhere? Where and when? Can I come over to your apartment in 15 minutes or so? Of course. Do you have the exact address? I answered. I know the area, but not the exact street address or apartment number, she answered, and I gave it to her. I had no idea what she wanted to talk about, but I made sure there was some white wine, orange juice, and seltzer in the refrigerator. Brenda arrived 16 minutes after the call. Not that I kept track of that. She accepted my offer for a glass of white wine, and I sipped from a seltzer can. After a few minutes of talking about her day, what she was doing, and my apartment complex, she drank the rest of her wine and put on a serious expression. Brian, I came here for a specific reason. I want revenge sex. Unfortunately, when she said this, I just started sipping the seltzer and choked. I quickly recovered and said, I don't understand, Brenda. Jeremiah is having an affair with that slut Alice from your office. I need revenge sex, and I can't think of a more suitable man to have it with than with you. You're a hot guy. Jeremiah hates you, and you hate him. So you're the perfect candidate. She wasn't playing fair when she said this. She spread her creamy thighs seducing me.
I started to sweat. Uh, Brenda, you're obviously a sexy woman that any straight guy would love to take to bed. But even though I don't like your husband, I wouldn't feel right having sex with a married woman. A woman. I felt excited. As I said this. Don't you think he gave up the right to my vows when he broke his own by fucking that slut, Alice? Um, I understand why you're angry. I would be too. But how do you know he's having sex with her? And what about the divorce? She reached into her purse, pulled out a 13 us 18 envelope, stood up, walked over to me, sat on my lap, which was difficult to do comfortably given my arousal, and opened the envelope. She took out five color photographs and showed them to me one by one. They were taken in our bedroom, on the bed I sleep on, on two different days when I was working on Saturday. They showed JJ having sex with Alice. In one photo, I was surprised at how huge her breasts were. Unfortunately, this only made me even more aroused and me even more awkward. Uh, I see that you're right, but, but why don't, uh, don't you just divorce him? I stuttered. Before I quit the game, I need to get my affairs in order financially. I have some big jobs on the horizon that I can't afford to jeopardize, and a few other things to do, and Jeremiah's mother, Esther, is the owner of the real estate agency where I work. I can't afford to rock the boat by filing for divorce for another six months or so. In the meantime, it's hard for me to have sex with this cheating bastard. I'm horny and want revenge, she said. With these words, she threw away the photographs and the envelope and kissed me on the lips. I started to experience sensory overload. Before I lost control, I managed to gather my courage, stand up, lift her off her knees, and set her on her feet. Looking into Brenda's captivating emerald green eyes, I was close to tearing her dress off, but again I restrained myself. Sorry, Brenda, you are the sexiest woman I know and I love your personality, but I just can't do it. I just can't have sex with a married woman. My words stopped there. Sweat was dripping from my forehead and my armpits were wet. I expected Brenda to be angry, but instead, a sly smile appeared on her face. Okay, Brian, I can't believe you'd say no to this, she said, moving her hands up and down the sides of her body. But I'm not going to beg, and it shows that you're a moral guy. However, let's talk a little more. Without me sitting on your swollen manhood, she grinned. Uh, okay, I stammered. But you shouldn't sit with your legs spread, I whined. She laughed at this and then sat down, closing her legs and draping her dress over her knees. Okay, if you don't want to have sex now, how about when I file for divorce? Then will you fuck me? I wiped the sweat from my forehead. Everyone has different views on the ideal female form. From what I saw in Brenda's body, to my taste, she has the ideal female form. Therefore, the only honest answer to her question was, this will probably be the highlight of my life, so hell yes. At this, she smiled and then continued. Okay, now, even though you gave up sex for revenge, you can help me get revenge on Jeremiah in another way and, at the same time, give yourself pleasure. Like this? I asked, genuinely curious. Of course, after fucking Alice. This threw me off balance. I think I spontaneously exclaimed, Wow! Brenda laughed at my reaction. She stood up, picked up the five photographs she was showing me, and put into my hand the one in which her huge breasts were clearly visible. Although I hate this slut, I have to admit that she has decent breasts, and also a nice ass. Don't you think so? I must have nodded my head affirmatively, because she continued, Your sex with Alice will drive Jeremiah crazy and make me happy at the same time. I looked up from looking at the photo. Why do you think I can force her to have sex with me? For several reasons. Firstly, she is a slut. Secondly, you look better than Jeremiah. Thirdly, he cannot be with her as much as she wants, because he has a ball and chain, as he calls me, holding him back. And fourthly, I overheard her telling one of her friends at a company barbecue that she thought you were very sexy. 
Brenda and I sat for a long time, looking at each other. My mind was running through different scenarios. Although I would never want a long-term relationship with Alice because she cheats with a married man, there was no reason why I couldn't enjoy sex with her. Besides, if Brenda is indeed going to file for divorce in six months, I'd like to be the first to assert my rights, because she, despite being five years older than me, is the best prospect for a long-term romance of anyone I've ever seen. I have met in my life. After a long pause, I said, That's what I can agree to. I'll try to seduce Alice. You can make sure Jeremiah knows about this if necessary. I get the right to be the first to date you. Exclusive for three months, as soon as you file for divorce. Besides, you and I should meet for training or lunch at least once every two weeks to discuss everything. Agreed? Brenda smiled widely and laughed. Agreed! We both stood up, shook hands, and then she pressed her body against mine and gave me a passionate kiss, which I had a hard time breaking off quickly. Brenda then smiled and said before turning and walking out the door, I can't wait to find out what's in your pants in six months. On Monday, I launched Operation Fuck Alice. The first task was to find out what she liked and where she went when she wasn't studying with JJ. I had already communicated with the secretary, who was her friend, and saw information about a local sports bar on her desk. I cunningly found out information from the secretary and went to a sports bar several days after work when there was a chance that she would be there. The first time I saw her at the sports bar, I simply said, Hi, but in a friendly manner. The next time, she was with two other people from work that I knew, and I walked up to them to say, Hi, rather than just walk past them. As hoped, I was invited to sit with them. After that, I was in no hurry, but everything went smoothly. The first real push came when I learned from my meetings with Brenda, which were at least twice a month and then once a week, that she and JJ were going out on Saturday night, and I happened to mention to the group at the sports bar that I had four tickets that Saturday night to see the Rusty Nails, a quirky band that Alice liked. It's a pity that I don't have anyone to go with, I thought out loud. I'd love to go, Alice smiled. Me too, said Audrey and Sylvia, one a paralegal, the other a secretary at Austin McKenzie, Audrey single, Sylvia married. Is it true? I answered, feigning surprise. Although I don't have a ticket for your husband, Sylvia. No problem. He's going to some sporting event with his friends this evening. She smiled. Okay, then I guess we'll be the four musketeers who love music. I laughed. I knew Alice would figure out a way to be alone with me. So I added, why don't you three talk about logistics and I'll get us another round of drinks from the bar. When I returned to our table ten minutes later, it was clear that Audrey had been appointed press secretary. Hey, Brian, since Sylvia and I live close to each other, and Alice lives kind of close to you, why don't you pick Alice up and Sylvia and I can go together and meet you there? Sounds like a ready-made plan, I smiled. I wasn't impressed with rusty nails, but the gimmick worked perfectly. I could have fucked Alice that night if I wanted, but I was going to take it slow. Two weeks later, I asked Alice to go to a play with me, and we went back to my apartment on Friday night. She was as hot as any other date in my life. Within ten minutes of us entering my apartment, she took off her top, showing off her most desirable assets. I truly enjoyed caressing her huge size four assets for ten minutes before she pounced on my cock like a bear on a salmon. She was so sexy that she would let me fuck her without protection but I was going to be careful with her, so I used a condom. Once we had recovered from our climaxes, to her disappointment, I drove her home, telling her I had an early meeting out of town the next morning. Over the next month, I continued to play slow games with Alice. When he suggested that he would like to have sex without protection, but we needed tests for sexually transmitted diseases, she passed them the very next day. It was clear that she was eager to please me in any way possible, and although it might have been evil for me, I kept her believing that we could have a future together. Having sex with Alice was fun. However, there was no way in hell I was going to start a relationship with her. It was just a means to an end. After I had sex with Alice for about three months, Brenda wanted to carry out her plan to fool JJ. Through her sources, Brenda never told me what those sources were, 
She learned that JJ's excuse was that he had to stay late at work on Thursday night because he had a sex session scheduled with Alice. On Thursday morning, I saw Alice at work. We usually tried not to meet there and begged her to come to me for sex that evening, saying that I was turned on by her and her magnificent breasts. Brenda later said that JJ was furious and very sullen that evening. And the next day, she asked one of her sources to let JJ overhear herself saying, I wonder if Alice has something with Brian. I saw them leaving together yesterday in Brian's car, and this morning her car was in the same place in the garage before she came here. That Thursday night, I wanted Alice to have a good time getting rid of JJ, so I brought her to three climaxes and then woke her up in the middle of the night and fucked her again. The next morning, she had stars in her eyes. I never found out who Brenda's sources were, but whoever they were, they actually had their finger on the pulse of events. Apparently, J.J. confronted Alice and they had a big fight the Saturday after Thursday when Alice avoided going on a date with J.J. In fact, I believe J.J. hit Alice. At least I know she called the police and he was arrested at his and Brenda's townhouse that evening. This gave me the perfect excuse to break up with Alice, too. At first, I consoled her on Sunday, but when I found out what happened and that she was cheating with a married man, I became indignant, self-righteous, and fake angry. Told her I could never be with her for long because she cheated with someone she knows is married, which means she will definitely cheat on me if I marry her. Apparently Alice really liked me because she seemed devastated by my abandonment of her. The incident with JJ and Alice was Brenda's reward for revenge, but it forced her to hasten her divorce from JJ. She applied on Tuesday morning, and JJ was brought in for a bail hearing on Tuesday afternoon. Although his mother posted bail for him due to his domestic violence with Alice, Brenda was able to get a protective order to keep him away from her and their townhouse. He went to live with his mother. Brenda knew her time at the real estate agency was limited when she made it clear to JJ's mother that she had no intention of giving up the divorce or the protective order. She brought her financial situation to 90% of the state in which she wanted to see it. That Wednesday, she showed up at my apartment. When I opened the door, Brenda had a big smile on her face. Hello, Brian. Ready for the next stage of our deal? Over the past four or five months, Brenda and I have gotten to know each other well because about we talked at least once a week for most of that time, and it was obvious to both of us that we had a simmering sexual attraction to each other. Oh, this deal. You didn't think I was serious about her, did you? I think I'll probably end up with Alice. I chuckled with a devilish grin on my face. Brenda knew I was just making fun of her, so she pretended to be shocked. But Brian, I thought you were attracted to me. So you think you'll be better for me than Alice? I giggled. Damn unlikely. But Brian, at least let me show you my naked body, she replied, feigning concern. With these words, she pulled her sundress over her head, with no underwear underneath, and made a pirouette. When I saw her naked body, it confirmed what I had long suspected. For my taste, she has the ideal female form. I walked up to her, hugged her, and then said dispassionately, Well, I guess I should give you a chance before I kick you out. And then he kissed her. After that, we stopped playing games. I carried her to my bed and caressed her to a crushing climax. What happened was significantly different from all my previous sexual experiences. Not only was she wild, passionate, deliberate, and athletic all at the same time, but she also had a real emotional connection with me. Although we were so exhausted and bleary-eyed the next morning, we were also rational. I love you, Brenda, I said quietly, looking into her eyes. I love you, Brian, she replied tenderly. Where do we go next? I asked. We'll leave this town together. We'll find work at least 500 miles away. Then, as soon as my divorce is finalized, we'll get married and I'll give you a couple of kids. I smiled. Tomorrow I will send out my resume. Where do you want to live? Hmm, she smiled. I need to think about this a little. While I'm thinking, why don't we make love? I agreed. Our first morning waking up together was ten years ago.
I was surprised at how well my knowledge of small business administration and related government licensing transferred to other law firms. I had a new job in the city where Brenda wanted to live for three months. We left for our new city two days after her divorce took place. We'd like to wait a little longer for her to release the two bambinos she promised me. But apparently her sexual bliss had made her forget about her birth control pills, and my swimmers were potent because she was six weeks pregnant when we got married in our new city two weeks after we arrived there. I still remain in good physical shape, but now it comes from running around after our three kids, coaching the older kids' sports teams, and doing intense workouts with my wife at least five days a week. I'm still as fit as ever, but I'm damn happy. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.